help people to adopt more and more technology, but as well receive the value that they create within this technology. So from many to many instead of from many to few. And the goal of the Swissbox venture is to invest in projects that facilitate these things. And I guess it, it leads us to, to the next discussion about game, but uh, I think, Let yeah. Let me ask you a question. <laughs> So are there specific industries that uh, Swissbook Ventures likes to support? Um, any trend, specific trend that you're seeing in crypto space that you are focusing your uh, resources and your attention? That's a very good question. So one of the trends we are very excited about is game. It's game that leverage blockchain and crypto technology to integrate within their experience. And the reason is what we witnessed last year in 2021 is mass adoption of crypto, or we like to believe it, right? Um, but I think the part where, as technology, if we fail is to help people not only to speculate on crypto, because most of the use case is just buying crypto and just waiting for the crypto to go up. But reality is most of the crypto, the beauty of crypto as opposed to stocks is they can be used. They have a utility and they can, you can leverage them to experience something within games or other experiences. So as technologists, I think we failed to help people to realize that, to invite them to experience crypto beside the speculation part. And I guess game is one of the industry that will really, really help this uh, goal to happen. And so th that's one of the reasons why at, at Swissbox Venture, we're very excited about investing in games because again, I think they can provide, they can distribute crypto among people and help them to see that there is value beside this, the simple speculation. Any particular gamify project you want to mention to me? <laughs> yes, the, so th there is one project that we are extremely excited about, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why, which is Cross the Age. Uh, I think, first of all, they are European, and as I mentioned, you know, we, we like to, uh, to be part of the European entrepreneurship. I guess there is, of course, uh, I respect a lot what's happening in the US, in Asia as well, there is incredible growth. But I, I guess uh, as well, uh, I want to believe what happening in Europe as well is, is very strong. So <clears throat> the reason why I love Cross the Age so much is um, with experience uh, last year, already big growth into uh, what we call gamify. So which is gaming uh, within blockchain and cryptocurrencies. And one of the Biggest example we can, we can see right now is Axie Infinity. Axie Infinity has been this game that, you know, generate a billion dollar of revenue in one month that had been adopted in, in Philippines, like half of the population was playing to. So it was a good use case just for people to see game can be big in cryptos. But I think what with Axie Infinity and all the other guy that more or less were copy paste of what Axie Infinity were doing, what we have not seen is uh, the enjoyment, uh, the, the pleasure to play, because at the end of the day, and that's why most of the industries say, uh, oh, now it's play to earn. Play to earn. But in the real game, the real world, you play first, and, it, and eventually you spend, right? And I think the next phase is not play to earn, but play and eventually earn, right? But I think playing, the playfulness, the beauty of a game needs to come first. And we haven't seen that. I think when you look at Axie Infinity, it's a very boring game to play. You're just playing because there is an economic that facilitates you to play. And, mm -hmm. and, and what we see actually is just it, the, the adoption in Europe and other countries is very, is very low. It's just countries with uh, a lower income that just play because of the financial incentive. Mm -hmm. But that's not what the game is about. Mm -hmm. What I love about, yeah. And, and that is why uh, um, Cross the Ages is play and earn. It's not play to earn. Because you would, like, I don't, I'm, not a, I'm not a gamer, but that's something I want to play. Um, the artists involved who were involved in Avatar, I mean, and, and other, you know, iconic movies. How would you not want to play that, right? Exactly, and th that's, that's why we were so excited about uh, cross the age because we really, first of all, we, we, we capture the passion of the founder. Mm. That's the first, I think that's the first point of connection is 
you have to have people that are passionate, not about the economics, but about the game. They want to say, to, to bring something on the table. It's just, at the end of the day, you design a game and you inject crypto and blockchain economy because it gives even a stronger sense of community. It helps people to create value within the game and this value belongs to them. It doesn't belong to the game developer, which is the beauty of it, right? But on the first place, you design a game that is great to play, that can compete with Magic Card uh, in, in that case, or all the big guys that we see, right? Uh, Earthstones and, and, and all these massive players are very active into uh, card games. Um, and, and I think that, that for us, that was the first criteria is can you, are you in a position to design a game that even without the component of blockchain can compete with what, what existing out there? Because people are, are spending money today to play great games. And then it, well, of course, because our mission is to again help people to get access to the value they create within um, technology and within virtual uh, reality. Having a, a group of people at Cross SDH that develop great games with great narrative, beautiful cards, and as you mentioned, avatar people coming to help and, and being able to, to, to assemble, to build a team of so great talent. But on top of that, understanding that it is time now for games to unlock the economy, to help user to get access to this economy, that was, that was a no brainer. And, uh, and we're very proud of, of being part of this uh, adventure. What, uh, what do you see as a trend in gamify? Um, it's all great to create a game. It's all great, people coming and playing, and they play first, they earn later. But what is, what's gonna come next, right? Because it has to go somewhere. Yeah, that's a good question. I think I see three trends. Mm -hmm. The first one, as I say, is moving from play to earn to play and earn, so enjoying what to play and eventually earning something, either by accumulating reward in the game through NFTs or coins, or become by becoming an esports star. I think there is no reason why today, um, if you're very good at playing a game, it couldn't be your, your, your work, it couldn't be your profession. I think we've seen that in sports, I guess, hundred years ago, it was almost impossible. If you are good at football or tennis, you just play for fun, right? Most of people play for fun, but they couldn't imagine themselves being professional because the infrastructure was not, you know, was not ready. Now we're ready. And I think blockchain is already existing, but I think blockchain will just accelerate mm -hmm. uh, because for now it's very centralized. It's still a few teams. It just help to decentralize and have a much more local approach. The second part is, and we see that already is, as well, what comes within games. Um, so with games come guilds. So we see tokens uh, that merge the concept of DIO, so decentralized autonomous organization. What they do is they recruit players to play within games and they create this concept of guild. So now you can become part of this guild. So you are an active member within this DIO and you play games, you accumulate reward, and you facilitate economy as well, because we know within these games, you need NFTs, you need, uh, eventually you need money, uh, and you, you might be a student, doesn't have the money, must, you might have the passion for the game, but you don't have the NFT or the money to play with it, but you can find with, through the guilds, so from this decentralized autonomous organization, you can find um, means for you to play and, and bring value back to, to guilds. So I guess, so play for play and earn, and then there will be collaborate, compete and earn, I guess, with the concept of guild. And the last part is what comes with this uh, uh, entire economics is as well uh, reaching mass adoption. So if you, if you remember Facebook uh, and games was, uh, I mean, games was a massive uh, growth strategy for Facebook. And I'm, I'm pretty sure you play Candy Crush for you have a friend playing Candy Crush. No, you didn't play to it, but no. it was it was this massive game, right? I, I started for ten years, and then I and then I became a lawyer. What do you think uh, we have time to play games? But I do remember back then. Um, you know, you play the games, and then Facebook were inviting you to say, "Oh, invite a friend, give him, uh, for example, 
some special power within the game inviting to participate. And that's how Candy Crush became viral because I was sharing to my friends through my wall on Facebook or through private messages. I was sharing special power and something. someone was saying, oh, what's the special power and start to play with it. And as, as an outcome, just receive addiction and adrenaline. But I guess what, um, um, what GameFi and, and, and blockchain can bring to the table is now I'm going to send you special power with the game through your wallet, but it's going to bear value. So then you're going to start to understand, oh, I'm, I'm sending you this special um, sword in the game that help you to have special power. And now you start not on level two, la uh, level zero, but you start on level two with this player. But it b does bear value. It's not just a free sample to use that then you, you become addicted to the game and you're going to spend money. I used to, you have true value and you're invited by a friend to participate within this game economy. So it creates a completely different narrative, in my opinion. And that's why I see it's going to accelerate uh, adoption. So another interesting trend that I see with uh, gamifying industry is moving into the metaverse, right? So you have already the collection of amazing players, guilds playing, they play to earn, play and earn. Um, you have to take the crowd somewhere, right? Why not to take them into the metaverse where they can build their own city, where they can build their continent, where they can have, you know, the plots of land on which they farm, stake, and perform other, you know, cool earning activities. What do you think about that trend? Yeah, I think, of course, metaverse is so immersive as an experience that we can imagine the range of the possibilities are just enormous. And, uh, and then when you inject real economy with it, so I'm going to be part of the metaverse and I'm going to have a social activity or work, or I'm going to perform tasks for a guild, I'm going to receive a salary somehow, or I'm going to receive value for it then we can, we can really think that there is a new type of economy that's going to be out there, right? And, and I guess as well, it comes at the same time where real work in our economy is, is you know, is disappearing because of either technology or because I think fundamental change such as, I don't think people accept uh, the work condition as much as they used to do in the past because the family model has been shaken. I guess when you, when you were a young gra graduate uh, decades ago, you can accept a job that you don't really like because you say, I'm going to build a house, I'm going to buy a house, and I'm going to have family, and that's what all matters. And because of, I guess, religion at the same time, but as well because of real estate going crazy and people don't project themselves buying a house because it's, it's such a commitment much more than it used to be. But when you go out of school, you say, okay, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to take a job that I like, and, and then I'm, maybe eventually I'm going to travel, and maybe I have kids, right? But then it, it, cha it has changed a lot the dynamic of, uh, of the work industry. Uh, and in the meantime, we see already that happening in, I think, now the US as uh, uh, the bonus interview. So if you show up to an interview, you're going to get paid because people are really struggling to find people showing up to interview. It's not affecting all the, the, the jobs, but you know, jobs such as waitress and et cetera is, is already happening. So I guess maybe what we're going to see as well in the future is maybe concepts such as basic, uh, universal basic income, and maybe you will have to fulfill as well uh, something in the game, right? In a, in a metaverse, sorry. So you, you will have to, to do something into the, the meta-reality. Whatever is game or not game, I don't know. I think um, what, when, when I see, one of the things that I see is when I see how much sports has grown. I, I think UFC, I don't know if you're familiar with UFC, which is this combat sport. It was a very small startup 20 years ago, 15 years ago. And now it's, it's this massive sport. Like it's one of the most growing sport in the world. But yet when you fight as a fighter, you're going to fight and then you need six months to recover, to train again. If fight happen in the metaverse and you're an e-sport player in the metaverse, you can fight uh, tonight or rest tomorrow because you know, your body is not going to be that much affected and, and, and fight again the day after. So I guess in a society that is looking for more and more entertainment at the broader scale, 
then we reach as well the limitation of the human body and metaverse can overcome this limitation by offering its force. So people will argue it's not the same as saying people fighting in the real verse, like for real. But I do believe the next generation will not care. What they want is to see great entertainment happening in front of their eyes with all the betting industry as well coming. And they want that at scale because people will stay more and more at home and the, the, the reality that we know today is going to be different. So human as well is pushed to scale as technology scale and we reach the limit of the physical reality. So me meta reality is, you know, it's just around the corner. Do you think we already live with the simulation? That's a very good question. I was about to say, being in Dubai, you know, sometimes, I'm, you know, where, where, when we don't work too much, too, too late and etc. I'm going out there and I look at this incredible place, right? That was nothing 20 years ago. And you look at it and you say, maybe we're part of the, of already a simulation. It's just an extension of what is already happening. And there is great scientists, by the way, that have write this white paper that shows that if we, the, the, if we're not living in the simulation, the chance that we are living in the situation, simulation next are so high that then the, 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 the probability that we already live in the simulation are high as well. I think we live in a simulation. Um, and um, there are two ways I think you can look at it. You're either an active player in the simulation or you're a passive watcher of a simulation. And I think people have one or the other approaches in life. I'm sure you meet people and they're such active players in their life. You go, okay, you know, what's going on here? So that person has taken an active player in the simulation role. And then sometimes you see a person who's sitting back with the worst victim mentality you ever can imagine, complaining about everything, getting fat and, 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 and eating junk. So for me, that's a watcher of a simulation. I'm convinced 100% uh, that we live in a simulation. We're just now creating our own simulation, metaverses. Why not? A simulation within a simulation. Exactly, who knows? And uh, it's fantastic, and it's a fascinating topic. Mm. And, I, and I guess as well, when I look at people like Tony Robbins, all these persons that are so convinced we have this power of materialization, so whatever you imagine can be created out of this world, it, it depends on how much you want it. I guess if we follow these rules, we say, oh, these people that have created so much in their life, that we like them or not, um, they believe so much, and all of them, uh, famous actors and etc. that in a way, this is the secret formula, the superpower of the simulation. I'm not a fan of Tony Robbins. He gives me headaches after five <laughs> minutes shouting around. So I'm not a fan of Tony Robbins, but I, I understand what you're saying. You know, you watch some people literally create their life from zero, from nothing. They, they come from nothing, according to them. Uh, and then they, they play through the game to reach, you know, the, um, all the stars they currently have or whatever you have to do to collect in the game. I don't know. I'm not a game fan, that's a show. <laughs> so we're talking about the games, we're talking about the community and a Swissburg always putting community in the center. Um, is there anything exciting coming out of there? It's a very good question. So I think when we look at the Swissburg ecosystem, so we have the app where people can buy cryptos. Um, we have Swissburg Venture now that is trying to connect project that we believe will be part of the future and are aligned with the mission and then connect them with the app. What we try to do as well is with this project is not only to invest in them. I think it's irrelevant anyway. We are in the world where money is almost for free, right? Um, so the goal is to help this project as well to build, to uh, be part of this ecosystem and want to facilitate their adoption. So for example, if projects are, are very successful, we're going to list them in the app. When it's come to game, one of the ideas as well, which connect again with offering our community with more and more opportunity to experience investment. What we want to do with game is we have this secret project. I'm not going to reveal the name for now, but uh, it's, it's cooking, let's say. And the goal is to create guilds. So we have this huge community on, uh, on one side. Most certainly there is players and we, we already have contact uh, with, with some of the, the people. So they will, we have this project where 
uh, it's going to function as a DIO, so decentralized autonomous organization. People will join, and then with the project we invest, such as CTA, which is a great game, then we want to bring players that can create value within these games, right? And at the meantime, <clears throat> within our community, we have people that are not necessarily interested in becoming players, but they understand there is great economy that are going to be created within these games. So if you take the example again of Cross the Age, we have fantastic piece of art, which are cards that can be played, but have a value as well themselves because they are beautiful and they can be used in the game. And they are in limited edition. So guilds, the ambition of guilds will be to bring play on one hand, investor and understand there is value that are created within this economy and bring them all together to accumulate NFTs and cards and coin and facilitate the entire ecosystem to work all together. And it's great. It's a great avenue, not only to bring more value to the project we invest, but in the meantime as well, opening more investment opportunity. And I want to say experience opportunity, because for me, that's very critical is how invite people to experience to our community to invest in game and NFT, which is very obscure until now, right? It's very hard to invest because you need the expertise, you need to, to follow all these things and it's tiring. So that's the project where, that we have as well to facilitate. That was wonderful. Thank you so much for your expertise and for your knowledge and to giving us the insights in, into what is happening in the crypto space, in the gamify space, and all giving us all the secret information about Swissborg, about all your cool upcoming projects. That was absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for your time. We will include all the information in, and all the details below so people can come and learn more about Swissborg and they can come and learn more about Swissbox Ventures. And I will see you at the AIBC Summit. Uh, and you've been attending AIBC Summit over the last few years, and um, they're very grateful for your support as well. You will be able to meet all the gamified projects. You'll be able to network with other DeFi projects and also venture capitalists. A lot of VCs are coming. And I look forward to seeing you in March again in Dubai. It was a pleasure. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs>